Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to create a function called HasValue that you can use in your forms to check for values that might be null or empty strings because it's a pain to have to always check for both of them. And long text fields and short text fields behave differently. Of course they do. Today's question comes from Mason in Schaumburg, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. Mason says, how can I understand the difference between an empty value and a null value in Microsoft Access? I have a button on a form to check if a field is blank, but when a user deletes a value in a record, I notice that the behavior differs for short text fields, which become null, and long text fields, which become empty. Can you explain what's going on? Yeah, Mason, it's confusing, it really is. If you have a record open and you delete a short text value, it becomes null, even if you don't leave the record and come back. If you delete a long text field, it becomes an empty string. Let me demonstrate. Before we get into it, this is a developer level class. What does that mean? That means you'll need to know some VBA. If you've never done any programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Watch my video on null values so you understand what that means. Watch my video on zero length strings so you understand the difference between those two things. You'll need to know how to make an if then statement. And go watch my video on creating a custom function, which we'll be doing today. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And let's go to the customer form. Here's the customer form. Now on here, we've got a short text field. We've got a bunch of them, first name, last name, whatever. And we got a long text field, formerly known as a memo field, right over here. Now, I'm going to make a button real quick so we can check to see what the value is, if it's null or an empty string for each of these things, okay? So I'm just going to hijack this orders button right here, right? And we'll just call it the check button. And right-click build event. And in here, we're going to say if is null, first name, then message box first name is null okay and if first name is empty string then message box first name is empty okay and if it's neither of those things we won't get a message box if it has a value in it right okay so click the button nothing happens it's got a value okay if I delete that value and hit the button it's null. First name is now null. Even though I haven't left the record yet, it's null. Okay? If I leave the record and come back, it's still null. In fact, the only way you can make a short text field intentionally an empty string is to put an empty set of double quotes in there. Now, it's empty. Okay? But generally, if you put some other value in there, okay, and then delete that value, it's now null. Okay, so short text fields, delete the value, it goes to null. Now let's check the same thing for our notes field. All right, our notes field. Let's come over here and let's change this to notes. 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 And notes. All right, notes is a long text field. All right, save it. Come on back over here. You ready? Click the button. Nothing happens. That means it's got a value. Delete what's in there. Hit the check button, it's empty. See, it treats it differently. Access treats long text fields differently than short text fields. If I put a value back in there, nothing happens. If I take the value out, it's back to empty. Now watch this. If I leave the record and then come back to it and check it, it's null now. See that? It's, it's weird. I'm telling you, it's weird. Yeah, there's technical reasons why it happens like this, but it's a pain because if you've got buttons in here, you know, or other events that are, you know, checking the values of these fields when the user's doing stuff, you got to always say, okay, if, uh, if notes is null or if, if is null notes and, or, you know, is, if it's empty, you got to always check all those conditions and it's a pain. It really is a pain. So that's why we're gonna write a function to just check both of those situations for any text field. We're gonna to check to see if it's null, and we're also gonna to check to see if it's empty, and we're gonna return a value based on whether or not it has a value. 
right? If it's null or it's empty, it has, will say that it has no value. Okay, so here's, how, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to our global module out here. If you don't have one, create one. Go watch my uh, create a function video. All right, it's just literally create and then module, not class module, module, and you put your code in here. Okay, so down here, we're going to say, well, I want a public function. What does public mean? That means that everybody in the database can use it, right? Public function has value. We're gonna send in some value, we'll call it X. It doesn't matter what it is. We're gonna make it a variant. Now, what is a variant? Well, there's different types of values, right? There's strings, there's long integers, there's integers, there's currency, there's Boolean for yes, no. Variant means I can be of any type. Any of those are valid fields. And the reason why you have to use a variant here is because you cannot send a null value to a function. It'll generate an error and we don't want that. But if it's a variant, that's allowed. Okay, so you gotta use variant for this function. And I cover variants in a lot more detail in my full developer classes. All right, now this has value is going to return a value, right? It's gonna tell you whether or not the value you sent into it is true or false, or is uh, true or false, is null or empty. So we're gonna say uh, as Boolean. So we're gonna return a true or false value. And you can put that in your notes here, right? Uh, this function will return uh, false if the value x is null or empty string, okay? Otherwise it'll return a true because it has a value. And there are other types of uh, objects and variables that can be empty or, or things like that, but this is gonna, this works for text boxes, okay? For text boxes. So if is null x, then has value equals false, right? Else if, now I'm gonna say trim x equals blank because you might a user might send you in a value that's just a space i've had that happen before too they might accidentally just hit a space and then you don't want to count that as an actual value right then has value equals false and the reason why i didn't put these together like with an or in here is because then this doesn't have to evaluate at all uh vba does something called short circuit evaluation where if the first thing is true then it doesn't even bother looking at the rest of them okay and it's also easier to read this way. Sometimes code readability is important. Else has value equals true. And if, and there we go, that's it. Check to see if it's null. If, if it's not null, check to see if trim X is an empty string. And if not, we're good to go. Let's test it, save it. Let's go back over to our forms code. Now here's a trick, watch this since I'm in my VBA editor, right? The window behind this one, if you close this guy, is gonna be that forms module, see that? I, I usually don't leave the Project Explorer open. I, I don't usually leave that, because I don't, I usually work with one thing at a time, or two at most, all right? All right, so let's get rid of this. And what we're gonna use now is our has value function. So we're gonna say, if has value first name, then message box, first name has value. And we'll say if has value notes, then message box notes has value. And that should be a quote. All right, save it. It's always good to throw in a debug compile from time to time. Well, let's come out, meow, close this, click on it. Let's click a button, check. All right, neither one of them had a value. All right, so I'm got, not getting anything. Let's put something in the first name field. Check. All right, first name has a value. Let's put something over here. Check. First name has a value. Notes has a value. All right, now let's get rid of this. That should be null now, so only notes has a value. Let's put something back in here and let's get rid of this. And then see, check. And first name has a value. Notes is not showing up with a value because it's empty right now, but it's going to check for empty or null. And if I leave it and come back to it, it still catches that it's null. So you don't have to have multiple checks or guesses for whatever values you have. And you can write, you know, you can write different code for different types of uh, values if you want to, if you want to make a numeric one, right? If zero is your blank, you can make a, you know, is zero function or whatever you want. I don't know. But this is just uh, another Lego, another tool in your box, right? There you go, there's your has value. Gold members, I'll throw this in the code vault and you can go get a copy if you want or you can download the database off the website. If you like learning this kind of stuff, if you like learning with me, if you enjoy 
learning VBA and you like my style and you want more lessons, well, I've got tons of developer lessons available on my website. There's a link right there where you can scan the pretty little QR code down there and you can go to my website and check out check them out. I got like 40 some levels of different uh, access lessons available. But that's gonna do it for today, folks. That is your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use 
the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.